you know, it's not really the case that uh, I don't know what it is that I'm going to say. It's just that what it is that I'm going to say emerges. Yes. Uh, you posted something uh, recently on your website which I found fascinating because it corresponded with an experience of mine that I've been having for quite a long time that I find that people are quite incredulous about and then I become incredulous about it because I just open my mouth and I don't have the experience that I am making it up before I say it and yet it has a certain level of coherence and so forth so it points to the idea that there is somebody behind there uh, making it up and so forth but the only confirmation I found in all of the rhetorical disciplines that I've studied is uh, you know in the New Testament Mark 13 11 when Jesus is telling his disciples uh, take no premeditation beforehand when you're going to go speak before the courts for it is not you that speak it is the Holy it is the Holy Ghost but now it seems like there's some research to back up Mark 13 11 yeah th this is a very uh, there's a lot of these paradigm changing research projects are very simple, elegant, uh, anybody can understand it, but they uh, looked at the way people actually do in fact listen to what they've said, and out of that listening to what they've said comes their story about what they said, their judgment about it, and this sense that in fact you did say that. Uh, the idea was very quickly to put, uh, you say some color, and they record that, and then they play it back into your ears, and then you look at something as a different color, and they play back that color in your ears, and lo and behold, you believe what you heard, not what you said. Mm. Uh, and so you've, you've been caught in this ruse of seeing that, in fact, you do come in post hoc, just right after it's said. Watch it, and out of that comes your belief. It's so quick, we don't catch it often, but it's so quick, that you believe that is what you actually said. And yet, it's a lot easier to see if you get less and less narrative. If you've got lots of narrative going on, you can completely miss the process, because it's happening so quickly, and you're just going blah, 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 and you think you said that, because you just recorded it back inside. But if it's very still in there, you can watch this thing going on. Right, so we could do that right now, for example, and that's what we're always doing. Exactly. Uh, in the videos. Right. Is uh, just, going slowly enough to allow the words to come out and to observe the way in which a narrative gets created out of them. Yeah. In other words, and anybody watching this video right now can do the same thing, right? In other words, right. they can get still, let words emerge out of them, mm -hmm. and experience the way in which they're really creating a framework to make sense of those mm -hmm. words, uh, rather than those words just emerging. Yeah. Something I found. I was doing it this week, I do a lot of chanting. And, and the chants are, you know, the brain, whatever, has learned to chant. So the chants, as you know, you, yeah. you do this stuff, come out automatically. They just, you just start the chant and it just does itself, blah, 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 yeah. blah. And so you can do that. You're very still inside, the chant's going on, and you can watch, you can actually watch this, the brain going over, you know, here, like, kind of like, and watching this chant come out and lo looking at it and analyzing and seeing the words and then making it out of the words some, some sense, some sense making out of the words, uh, just looking at them analytically. You can just watch the process. You can see how much it's offset at just a little bit post hoc. You can feel the energy that was changing because the, uh, the chant does itself cleanly, completely. There's no meditation whatsoever. It just comes out. So it's just fascinating to watch the brain. Right, but what's beautiful about that is that it provides us with a lovely moment where we can find stillness. Mm -hmm. Because once we say, okay, I, I see this research that says that there's no I that's coming up with what I'm saying right now beforehand, despite the immense impression that we have such an I that mm -hmm. is making up what I'm saying beforehand, maybe I can do some kind of empirical study mm -hmm. myself, since nobody else can do it for me, mm -hmm. to see where these words are coming from, right? And even as I'm doing this, I, I'm doing exactly, it. Right? Exactly, exactly. And, 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 and when, you, when you do that, you look, and if you really look, and instead of just immediately saying, well, of course, you know, 
I, you know, years of research have gone into the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. That training at prestigious universities and so right, right. instead of just and it's like, yes, 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 very nice. Yeah, but where is it coming from? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And actually look and see where is it coming from. It's really quite uproarious because you see that it's just burbling up mm -hmm. out of the pure nothingness. Right. And yet has the beautiful, uh, at least to the participants. You know, coherence, it cer certainly seems like it's ma making sense because there is then that moment yeah. where we go over it yeah. and we turn it into that kind of narrative that makes sure it fits in with everything else right. we've experienced in our lives. Right. But it doesn't have to be um, metaphysical. No. I mean, it can be the fact that we have this little tiny post -pro or tiny processor sitting yeah. up on top. You know, it's tiny, you know, DRAM with seven plus or minus two things. It can solve one, one problem at a time. Underneath that's this massive processor. There's all this data storage, all this information from great universities right. stored up down there. And then somehow in the process of speech coming forth, something, you know, about, yeah. say the off the offline brain, the huge offline brain, is generating the right response. But as we found in dialogue, that out of that huge, you know, massive parallel process of data storage, out of that comes something that's really coherent and it wasn't seen before. I mean, the fact that you say something, something comes out of you, right. and over here, something comes out of this, but underneath, the big processors are running this information, and something comes out of that that we can hear then hear that is much different from and better than either one of us could have come up with separately. Right, and we don't right. know what we've said until we see the video. And we don't know, we don't even know what we know. <laughs> we don't even know what we know until we see the video. Right. We realize, the video was like, my God, that's interesting. This thing has happened there. Right. It's because, you know, again, to use your parallel processor example, there's the parallel processor, and then it comes into the tiny thing on top, and the tiny thing on top says, hey, we've got some input here we've got to deal with. Let's do the same thing we always do with it. Okay, put it into space and time, and put me at the center of it. Okay, now send it along on its way, as opposed to, wow, there's kind of burbling along this word burble even, keeps, right. you know coming up and there's all this uh, um, order that is coming out of that you know evolutionary history that we mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. uh, which then can't possibly fit into this little narrative that we've constructed right. for ourselves right. over the course of our lives but that means almost by definition that almost all of our best ideas we're completely ignoring yeah because what we think we are saying mm -hmm. is actually not what we are saying yeah. because what we think we are saying is actually just the little tiny story of what we have said that we tell to ourselves. Right. And we have a little tiny processor up there to, pro to handle this story. So it's really a, a way stepped down version of what you honestly do know somewhere. Right, so you know, New Testament again, you know, Jesus is always saying, let, let those who have ears to hear, hear. Mm -hmm. And we think, oh, you know, he means just you know, some you know, select few are able to hear right. the depth. But no, we don't have ears even <laughs> For our own selves, right? You know, our own our own ideas that are burbling up, right. because as you point out, we don't know what we know. That's right. Because uh, what we think we know is just that which fits into that fixed static image, right. M and I that we've constructed our little stories out of. Right. Um, but that's incredible news, really. Well, and the offline stuff is so massive and so much beyond what our cognition of it can possibly be that it looks like supernatural like it's mystical, like it's God, or whatever. Right. But it just may be we have no way to interrogate that processor. We just have to sit there and wait until it comes up with something synchronistic to the situation. Behold, the words emerge forth, and know not what they mean until you interpret them. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's really true. I mean, uh, it gives people a problem sometimes to think uh, in terms of this concept, God, or the right. divine, and so forth. Fine. Think in terms of the mismatch between the hundred trillion neuronal interconnections right. that we have right. and the tiny stories that we tell about That's ourselves, right. right? right? You know, in baseball they always say, oh, the box score really can't tell yeah. the story of the game, right? right? right. It's like, well, yeah, it's definitely the case. The box score can't yeah. tell you what happened in the game. Right. We're just acting on the box score That's most right. of the time. Exactly. This very reduced, tiny, statistically insignificant sliver right of what it is that's getting all bent into this story. Right. But what that means is, that's amazing, right? No, totally. Is that there's all this untapped yeah. 
yeah. stuff out there mm -hmm. that is just getting, th you know, squelched by this nozzle of the nozzle. narrative mind. Yeah. And if uh, people would begin to just slow down and look and see where their words come from, mm -hmm. they would see that it's actually that space is teeming with right. ideas right. that have nothing to do with their history up to the present. Yeah, look at the ideas that we come up with, <coughs> that we speak. Yeah. I have an idea. Yeah. Okay, what, what is it? It's like it just comes out of no place. Yeah. And it doesn't come out of no place, perhaps. It may come out of this massive sure. processor that you just can't interrogate. You have no idea what's going on down there. And you think you're circumscribed by what you can speak mm -hmm. and hear and then log in. But in fact, you're much, much bigger than that. What you can access is much huger than that. You just can't interrogate it. Right. So it seems like, you know, a no place right. if we look. Right. Uh, but it could very well be nothing but the uh, 100 trillion neuronal connections of our mind. Right. And or we can continue saying that hundred trillion neuronal connections of our mind is enmeshed with an ecosystem which itself is populated by other massive parallel processors, right? right? And that's within the context of an environment that is teeming with signals and, right. uh, and, and sensory impressions of all kinds. So, in fact, when we're tuning into that no place where our words seem to actually emerge from, mm -hmm. We're turning in. We're tuning into this like, an immense, like infinity, right. of ideas and impressions. Right. Kingdom of heaven is within you.